This video is supported by Curiosity Stream. Let's say you woke up in the middle of nowhere and all you have is a map. You naturally went around asking people passing by for your location. First man you met tells you that he came from Boston and he drove 224 kilometers to reach here. With this information, you can draw a circle on the map. You still don't know where you are, but you're somewhere on this map 224 kilometers away from Boston. Then comes a second person. He tells you that he came from Albany, that is 185 kilometers away, and you've got your second circle. With the third circle from New York, you'd be able to pinpoint your precise location. And in this case, you're in New Haven. Today, I wanna to talk about global navigation satellites and how important they are to businesses. The situation I've just explained to you is the basic principle behind positioning systems. Real life situation is more complex than that. Instead of a 2D map, you have a 3D sphere. GPS satellites constantly send their location signals out to Earth. Knowing your distance to four minimum GPS satellites in the sky gives you four spheres, and their intersection with Earth is your location. But that alone does not make the whole system. For global system to succeed, ground stations and control centers must also exist to make sure everything is running smoothly. In the past decade, we have depended entirely on the US GPS system and the Russian GLONASS system for global positioning. But that is about to change with the Chinese Beidou and the European Galileo. Four systems provide similar services, but there are advantages for each of them. Reliability from the US GPS system, high resistance to interference for the Russian GLONASS system, most advanced technology were built in Galileo system and a unique feature were built into the Chinese Beidou system, which is the ability to transmit messages. This feature has been useful during natural disasters when all ground stations fail. Navigation systems are used in all aspects of our lives. For example, most of us know that GPS is used for triangulating precise locations, but seldom do people know about the atomic clock in GPS that is used in financial services, and rarely do we know GPS application in autonomous driving systems. The latest addition to global navigation system is Galileo and Beidou. Galileo was conceived 20 years ago, initiated by France, and Germany, and Italy after realizing the, the strategic value of GPS system. Case in point was the Kargil conflict between India and Pakistan happened in the same year. What shocked the European leaders was that President Clinton of the United States was able to influence the conflict by turning off GPS for the region with just a phone call. The Europeans knew at the time that they have to act and build their own GPS system in order to make decisions independently. In 2002, President Chirac of France gave voice to this fear among many Europeans that the continent risked becoming technological vessel of the United States unless it built Galileo. They do not want to be dependent on a critical infrastructure that they don't control. The Chinese decided on the same thing almost at the same time. Initially, they wanted to be a part of the Galileo project and committed $227 million. However, after claims of so-called security concerns, the Chinese were pushed out and subsequently decided to work on their own system called Beidou. In 2009, New York Times described this dilemma and the ironic fact that Beidou has progressed faster than Galileo and already occupied Galileo's desired frequency band in 2007. It was a hard time for Galileo, but giving up was not an option. With a considerable struggle, Galileo was back on track from 2014 onwards, catching up with the Chinese and sending 20 satellites to orbit in just a few years. Although still losing out in terms of launch speed, it did win back many points in the quality of Galileo's satellites. But how is this crucial to autonomous driving? That is the key discussion today. We know that autonomous driving systems must have a competent processing unit to constantly monitor various road conditions and make decisions based on them. We also know the importance of having a lot of user data so as to improve the decision algorithm. But what is the role of better navigation satellites? The answer is one word, accuracy. Accuracy has always been the Achilles heel of GPS systems. We all use GPS when we look for a precise location, but high accuracy has not been available to ordinary people until now, especially those living in the city. With the deployment of Galileo and Beidou, we can reduce location precision to a magnitude of centimeters for autopilot due to more reference points and the advanced technology. And here's what I mean. 
imagine yourself driving in the countryside. With only GPS, you can receive at best signals from four to seven GPS satellites. But with Galileo and Beidou, you now see over 10 satellites in the sky boosting your precision. In the city, we often get wrong locations because of the reflected signals from tall buildings, but now with more satellites in the sky at any point on Earth, we have a much higher chance of noticing the error and correct it. By the way, this is a simplification of reality. If you want to know the details, I'll link a few paper down below for your reference. So far, we have not touched upon the potential of combining Beidou and Galileo with 5G technology. The idea is very simple. I've talked about Tesla Autopilot and its superior performance in autonomous driving, but as powerful as the system, Autopilot can only sense what's going on for a particular Tesla. With the addition of Galileo and 5G, Tesla can know exactly where the car is and where it is in relation to other cars. 5G technology can reduce decision-making latency to milliseconds. Precision from Galileo and low latency from 5G will allow Tesla to know which lane you're on, and if it senses danger, it can stop the car in a matter of milliseconds. These are the benefits of 5G and GPS. Latency and precision is everything when it comes to road safety. In many ways, 2020 will be the most consequential year in space history, and here's what I mean. Galileo and Beidou will be fully deployed this year on the national level and on the private level, we'll see Starlink take shape and potentially change the landscape of communication satellites. We should not underestimate the potential of having a centimeter level global navigation satellite system. Not only is autonomous driving possible because of it, so is drone delivery, autonomous lawnmowers, virtual reality, and possibly even controlling dangerous machineries in the comfort of a control room. We've already seen some prototypes emerge, more is coming. This section is sponsored by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like technology analysis on this channel, you find many more documentaries discovering the nature of science and technology on Curiosity Stream. Recently, I got some time to sit down and watch this entire playlist on the recent development of technology and nature. From NASA's new discoveries on Mars to the bold moonshot attempt by a private Israeli company. From nuclear fusion technology to the Grand Cassini spacecraft. A lot more exciting projects are being built around the world and many of them are documented on Curiosity Stream. So check them out on curiositystream.com slash Curious Elephant. Lastly, Curiosity Stream offered audiences a 31 day free trial as long as you sign up with the link down below with the code Curious Elephant. Once your free trial is up, they charge only $19.99 a year, which is $1.67 a month. Another great news for our audience right now is that the annual subscription of Curiosity Stream also comes with Free Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Minute Physics, Wendover, and myself. There are many exciting exclusive contents on Nebula, so sign up for Curiosity Stream to try out both platforms today. All right, that's about it. I'll see you next time.